The Panthers Poundcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the presenters and in no way reflect the views of the Panthers organization. Listener discretion is advised. You got it. Welcome to the Panthers Poundcast. I am Master Splinter here with Jamaicus Plow, yep. Los Pantera, yeah. and the founder of the Roaring Riot, the unofficial Carolina Panthers fan club, <laughs> Zach Luttrell. Oh. I've been crowd noise. I like can yeah, audience Woo. member noises. Woo. We appreciate you joining us. Yeah, man. Very much. Glad to see the uh, beside, behind the scenes look at the the man cave here. It's, it's impressive. It, it's, it, it's, it feels smaller when you're in it, doesn't it? <laughs> Is that a fat joke? <laughs> well, I'm it, oh, you mean that, that's for him. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're Whoa. stealing my fat joke. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's cool though, 30 man. seconds. It's, it's decorated nicely. I like the figures you got everywhere, the pictures. So, you know, I've, I've seen it on the videos before, but it's cool to be here. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, uh, it just makes all the magic go away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's like meeting your heroes in person. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like five feet tall. tall. I didn't know that. <laughs> but, uh, and for those of you who don't know, I explain a little bit about what the Roaring Riot is. Uh, well, we, we call ourselves the unofficial fan union of the Carolina Panthers. And, uh, you know, basically what our goal is is just to unite Panthers fans across the country. Um, you know, we started doing this. Yeah, this will be our ninth, I guess, unofficial year. Uh, I say unofficial because we, we used to go down to Atlanta as a big tailgating group here in Charlotte. Is that how it started? Yeah, we would, we would take the trip down there. We would sit in different areas of the stadium, you know, and try to weasel our way in together. We, you know, yeah. someone would end up driving home a few people, which you know probably wasn't a very good idea back then. And you know, we decided in 2008 was going to be our first like organized trip down to Atlanta, where we secured the buses and the hotels. We went down a, a night early and just you know through with Panther gear, went through Buckhead and just made a bunch of noise and stuff, and, and yeah. chanted Panthers at every bar, which you know they didn't like that a lot. Um, so yeah, so. You know, we just started doing a lot of that stuff through away game trips, and um, and then uh, funny story if I can tell it real quick. I was actually uh, with my wife up at her company party in D.C. Uh, I think it was 2010, and Panthers were no, excuse me, 11. Panthers weren't very good, and um, we just found the closest bar next to her hotel. I wanted to stay and watch the Panthers before we flew back to Charlotte. Smart man. And just yelped it. Found this bar, walked in. I was like, you know, we got to get there a little bit early because I'm going to have to fight to get the Panthers on the TV, right? Because who cares in DC? No right. one has to put them on. Uh, so I walk in, and the first thing I see is this guy blowing up a big inflatable Panther, you know, oh. figure. I see Panther-colored balloons. There's about <laughs> 15 people in the bar, all wearing jerseys. Right, Nirvana. And I asked the guys like. Is this a Panthers bar? And the guy turned around to me and said, "No, it's a fucking Falcons bar." Is exactly what he said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bar. Keith, yeah, that's what he nice. said. And, Sarcasm. Uh, I said, "No, man, I'm just, I've just walked off the street. Yeah, what right. is this?" He goes, "Oh, come on in. It's a Panthers bar." So there ended up being wow. about sixty-five people there watching the Panthers, which at the time. You know, me being from Charlotte, we didn't have a Panthers bar in Charlotte. Right, exactly. You town, the Browns, it's the, it's the Dolphins, Steelers, and the Browns, Steelers. The Patriots, the Giants. You know, yeah. you could well, find a bar. Where I'm in Connecticut, too, that was always one of my issues was finding a spot to go. But I'd be lucky to find one or two one or two people. Oh, I, I, there's another jersey across the yeah, way. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, and, and that was it. So you walked into this huge... And, 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 I, and before that, I had spent three years up in Philly, and I was that same guy. I'd walk into the bar, you know, middle, middle of Eagles country, and yeah. you know, I'd get like a little 19-inch black and white TV on the ground to watch. <laughs> right. I, no know, sound in Buffalo Wild Exactly, and the they corner. were throwing things at me the whole time. So, you know, I knew uh. how terrible of an experience that was, but to be able to... To experience the, uh, you know, they were it's the Capitol riot now. They were the DC Panther fans then. Okay. Um, you know, I just I wanted everybody who was displaced outside of Charlotte to be able to feel man, that. You're doing so, good work, man. I just love it. So Very three cool. years ago, we launched our membership program. We got the other cities involved, and now we're up to uh, 36 different cities that have full chapters, and you know they have groups that get together for every game, and they have their own bar that dedicates the TVs to the Panthers, the sound to the Panthers, and it's it's their show, you know. Excellent. So, and if there's somebody cool. that's listening that's in a city that doesn't have a chapter, right? Uh, what are the minimum requirements? I think it's 25 p uh, 25 minutes. 
members. Right. For a full chapter, it's 25 members. You have to have the bar. Uh, you, got, you know, the bar has to give us the sound, all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's really it. But there's a lot of people who write us all the time saying, hey, you know, I'm here. You know, I don't see any other members. What do I do? I haven't joined because of that. And really, that's all it takes is a handful to, to come together, whether it's two, three, four. And, and once they start getting that momentum going, then, you know, we start pointing people their direction. And that's that's part of the network, too. It's not just oh, like us the, doing the building, it's like the building. we got people from Atlanta pointing people to Denver, you know, people in Denver pointing people to New York, you know, all over the place. So it's really nice. just trying to, to grow this big network. So now when we go to these away games, we're all together, you know. And that's, again, like, like I told you off the air, you know, our whole philosophy when we go to these games is we want to sit wherever we can where we can keep all of our people together, right. safety in numbers, but also we feel like we have a big impact on the game, you know, in, in an opposing team stadium where all yeah. of a sudden you hear this cheer when it's a Panthers first down. Right. We're right. not used to hearing anything like that. So. And you need that. You need people to high five and you need to uh, Absolutely. have that the familiarity around you. Yeah. But I think it, it says something that... As a younger franchise, I mean, uh, granted, uh, we're we're about to hit that quarter century mark, right. but <clears throat> as, a, as a younger franchise, it means a lot to see that places like Denver have a base of Panthers fans that are willing to come together and support the team from 2,000 miles away. Exactly. And, and, and the fact that there are 35 cities that have already done that is, I, I mean, it makes me feel good as a Panther fan to know that we do have that range outside of Carolina because right. we're here in Charlotte and, it's easy and, for and us. yeah, no, everybody so here is a Carolina Panthers fan. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> see the show about the levels of fan. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody here is a Carolina Panthers or Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and or Cowboys or Browns or that asshole you have Seahawks a Browns fan. fan? Uh, There's a Browns bar off uh, Woodlawn and Tryon. It, and that's the thing is like forever Cleveland. I've seen these uh, other teams that have Browns bars. We uh, we know a Jets bar uh, that is uh, yeah. in the middle. Uh, like it's in the middle of our territory. Absolutely. I think this is a good avenue here on the podcast because if I were a fan out of town and there, like you said, there might be two or three other people around you don't know, you haven't met them yet, you're watching some Panther stuff on YouTube because you're lonely, you don't have any other Panthers fans around. <laughs> lonely? Now, <laughs> no, but you have your own. <laughs> they have the Roaring Riot to end your roariness. Well, the the Denver guys, actually, they, they got started, they got a bar that said, okay, we'll, we'll be a Panthers bar, but you got to show up with, I think the number was 10 people to start. Oh, and man. there were two guys guys um, that just happened to meet out there. They're both Carolina grads, big Panther fans, didn't know each other from school, but yeah. uh, between their family and, you know, they would beg a couple other people from the Please. bar the night before to show up. Yeah. They started with 10 and now, you know, now they're the Mile High Cats and they got 120 something people so at the what, bar. That's what, so crazy. What is the, the number? I know you don't have an exact, but estimate with the, we said 36 cities now? or 36, 36 cities with full chapters. We've got uh, over 4,600 members nice. after, after last crap. year and that's I think it was like See, this is years. effort. We sit around and just talk on a camera for an hour on a Sunday. No, yeah, all, all this helps, man. We're all this helps. We don't really help. We don't really help. people say we hurt. <laughs> Those fans are out there, right? You know, we're yeah. not going right, just, exactly. we're not Come converting out of the people to Panthers fans. Not, you know, yeah. we like to do that, too. That's why, I mean, we're, we're pro bandwagoners. Cause for us, that's, you know, less mm -hmm. Steelers fans, right. whatever, Cowboys fans. More but, members. You know, what we're really trying to do is just build this network and give people the opportunity to find one another. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And if you like, rather than sitting, watching it on YouTube or streaming it at home or whatever it is, you know, if you yeah. live outside of Charlotte and it's not on the, the, the normal ca uh, cable network, you know, come to the bar, be around a bunch of people, high five, share those experiences. Because you know, for me personally, like, I love that stuff, man. Yeah. You know, I love hugging some dude I don't know because something cool just happened, you know. And I'm going to hug you after this interview. Can't wait. That was actually what I was getting at. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like something you said that you're pro bandwagon because I've kind of always been that same way because I believe that if you actually come and join on a bandwagon and watch the Carolina Panthers play, if you watch our style of football, if you watch the personalities on our team, you will become a fan. I think so there, it, it, there's no going back. You, you say you're a Cleveland Browns fan, <laughs> and then you come over and you get to watch Cam Newton and Luke Keekley play. <laughs> I mean, are you going back? It's, it, the same can be said for 
and 2025 20, teams in the league. Right. I mean, it's same with the Bears. Would you rather watch Jay Cutler or Cam Newton? Well, listen, we we don't have enough Mike history Lennon, sorry. of winning right. to, to be a true bandwagon type right. fan base, right? So if you come over to the Panthers right now and you say, "Hey, I want to be a Panthers fan," if it's because of Luke or Cam or the you know success we had two years ago. That's fine, man, because it's not like you're coming over trying on six rings like we're the Steelers or anything like that. Right, that's why you're right. picking the team. Like, we're, we're not old enough to be worried about a bandwagon fan, and, and we're not large enough. We're so. still an underdog. Yeah, label. yeah we'll, we'll still, uh, we'll still until take we, all until we win the ring. Right. Yeah, so year, after this year. year. So after this year, no more bandwagon. Let's talk about I, I saw, uh, I saw the, uh, the, uh, the tweet on the Roaring Riot Twitter. It, it just said, the Carolina Panthers are going to win the 2017. <laughs> it, it does have a special Ooh, feeling about it, you know. This year, you know, we got some old faces coming back. I feel yep. good about I it. I was so lit down after last season. We talked up so much stuff. We had 15 and one. We're going to be great. We're not going to be 16 and zero, but we're going to be like. Four, no, you were like you said we were gonna be sixteen and zero. He was like sixteen and zero. So, That's gonna be his prediction this year. Though. I just want to. I just want the game to start, man. There's still so many more moves to go on. We got the draft coming up. Right. Um, yep. uh, we've uh, we've already gone through free agency. Picked back up Pep. Picked back up Munerlin. Picked up uh, Adams out of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell this is Shepard like when the old wrestlers Tampa. come back to the Matt WWE. Khalil. And Matt, Matt Khalil, Khalil come with in his brother. Tackle. Haven't been a brother combo in a while. There's a lot of good things Those guys going are pretty on. funny together. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. they yeah. need their own show. I think it was the, they went on with the Dan Patrick show, maybe? They yeah, had they did like a 25, 30 oh, awesome. minute set on the Dan Patrick show, and it yeah. was. Well, he's hysterical. Yeah, right, exactly. Him and Jordan used to crack each other up. I watched videos. Yeah, now, I, I'm kind of curious to see what happens if, and this is a big if, let's say Michael Orr comes back and is just as good as when he left. And Matt Khalil is the same Matt Khalil that we've seen the last two Pro years. Bowl, that he, Matt Khalil. No, I'm talking about the, uh, the, the, the two years, uh, the sophomore <laughs> no and junior years for Matt <clears throat> Khalil, where he didn't play as well as he should have uh, before the hip injury. What do you do at left tackle if you're paying Matt Khalil the kind of money that you're already paying him? And Michael Orr is still on his deal. Do you play Michael Orr at left tackle and move Matt over to right? Can Matt play right tackle? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out because of all of the moves that we made in free agency, that that's right. the one that scares me the most right. because there's the most risk attached but to the But without risk money. where there's no reward, and that's really what we need to see unfold right. this season. I mean, it really came down to right. we could pay Mike Rimmers and no, have him stay <laughs> our left tackle Possibly, no. and that's not an option. That's like a cuss word so around here. You have Rammers. to go out and you have Rammers. to answer. It. You have to go and answer that uh, that question. And I I think that Matt Khalil was probably the best option. I mean, you got to assume he's going to have elevated play next to his brother. He's going to have a good atmosphere, a good environment. And then if you put if Orr does come back, he might be dead at this point. I mean, realistically, <laughs> if he does come back, he plays right tackle. That's his original position. You know, we should, they're going to use him as a thing. bench. It should be fine. I well, think. and and the the beauty of this is that we have an amazing center of our line. We have Andrew Norwell, we have Ryan Khalil, and we have Trey Turner. We just need them to be so, half good, and we'll have a really good line. Uh, right, and we need and, and just those one that doesn't get Cam better. fucking chased around and sacked. And that's the Sorry. bottom line. Cam's They're confidence bomb. has got to be. He's got to have. <laughs> faith in He's those so guys. passionate about seeing my quarterback get mugged every damn week. I'm well, really I, I read yeah. something that Cam Newton was hit nine hundred something times. Yeah. And uh, since he place. came into the league, and second place was Russell Wilson at like 600. But he's on the rise, and Cam's coming down, and with this better offensive line, it's going to be better. It's, well, not, it's another record for Cam Newton. The offensive line in <laughs> Seattle is <laughs> just one more the record. worst record. I know, the bad one to have. The, uh, the offensive line in Seattle is deteriorating, and I think ours is getting Which, better. Is that even possible? Is it going to get worse? God, I, I, hope I, so. I hope so. Nothing makes me happier than watching Russell Wilson run for his Life. And get I'm hurt. with you. It, wait, right. that's not true. No, I, I like yeah. seeing him get hit at the end. I like seeing him get picked. <laughs> I like him. So the, to swing back around to your question, for me, I want to see what Daryl Williams is going to do this year because that's what happened point. last year when Orr went down at left tackle, we had to slide Rimmers over, who's not a left tackle. That's when the entire line fell apart. So yep. now you have to right. think, God forbid, you know, something happens to Khalil or he's not playing well, and you have to shift Orr over. 
you know, now we need to make sure that Daryl Williams is going to be able to come in and, and represent on the right and yep. you know, pass pro. I mean, we know we can see we've seen him run block and he does well there. But you know, it's, what's it? It's thirty or four? This is this third is year? third. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need that guy to step up. We we need the depth. This that is the time. Right. Exactly. We had expected him to possibly be that answer at left tackle in the future. Like we thought yeah. that there was that potential there, but I after seeing it, like honestly, when he got a chance. Last year, he got mugged a yeah. couple of times. He got mowed over. Uh, like, they, uh, they took his lunch money. But I think he has a, uh, the potential to be a serious player as long as he continues to progress. That's he's it. got the uh, He's got the length. Got he's got the size. Like, he's got all the measurables. It's just a matter of getting it all to come together. And I, I'd like to see how, hopefully, this new, uh, the new left tackle that we brought in had, will help influence him on the right. So I'm curious as well to see how Daryl Williams plays out. You have to think we're, we're with the starting lineup, assuming Orr is in. I mean, that's a much better line than oh, man. The, the middle of the season yeah. last year. He oh, was yeah. one of the beginning of the season last it, year, right? Yeah. Bo uh, both of your tackles will have been pro bowlers. Which so, is something the Panthers I don't think ever had. Uh... I don't think so. That's probably true. Yeah, yeah that, that that's probably true. Wow. Los Pantera gets Los Pantera with right the, the time. Time. It's the time. The time. I'm feeling so he gets I just, smarter when we put on the time. Listen, I wanted to class it up because Zach here is our... You are great. Uh, <laughs> I do. I, yeah. I do. I, 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 I agree you. with you. I didn't know if you were going to church or something. Uh -huh. so, uh, this is just... He, he doesn't just stand a lot for... It's the Jesus Day. Yeah, it's the Jesus Day. And the silk pants, is that... The silk, are you? No, these things are rocking. Shiny. I got these at one of Wacoma uh, thrift outlets Wacom there. Uh, Wacoma. Out there at Myrtle Beach, another part of Carolina. So let's talk about the other side of the line. How about OKK? Okay, okay? Yeah, KK. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, we have five years from what I. I was a little surprised when I saw this earlier, but Spot Track says five years, eighty million dollars, twenty million dollars signing bonus, sixteen million dollars average, with forty years. and most 40 of it's up front. Forty years. Yeah. Well, uh, the twenty uh, the twenty million dollars he got today last <laughs> week, <laughs> KK. Uh, so cash, cash. He he is twenty million dollars richer right now. Did Charles Johnson say something about calling him big money? Yeah, now, now he's big, big money. money. Now he's big money. Right. But right. honestly, you have a tackle who, from the interior, had fifty five combined tackles in both of the last years. He is only, I say only, the top. Five or the fifth highest paid defensive tackle in the league. I have a hard time naming other defensive tackles that I would take over KK. No, he, he did the opposite of the Norman, and he said he was going to. He took a, home, a slight hometown discount to stay here because he wanted to be here, which right. I super appreciate guys like that. I love career Panthers. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we all do. It pulls on our heart. We love them to stay here. And he's worth that money to me. He's a one-man wrecking crew. He lets everybody else free up. You going to get a KK Inc.? Mm. <laughs> not before Luke or Cam. Okay. I'm not getting any more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no more until we win a bowl, yeah. dude. You know what? Wait until the players retire because the players on your arm doesn't matter. It's just one person. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and you cannot But they're still all Beeson. 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 And they're still Beeson. all Beeson. 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 Panthers. They're all light Panthers. They're all light Panthers. They're all light Panthers. They're all light Smith is not a freaking... Period. Yeah, where's your <laughs> and, and Luke, Luke and Cam? Oh, do you have any tattoos? Maybe at all? I'll get a KK. No, I don't. All right, so, well then, okay, then. that's all right. You're right. If you have like other things, you know, like a Pokemon no, or some no, shit, I got and don't okay, have a so. Panthers Pokemon. What, uh, what is it going to mean for KK to have Julius Peppers next to him? <laughs> yeah, oh God, I, I hope they use get Peppers the band like back together Hardy and rotate him on the inside too a lot too. Looks oh yeah, it, well, they need to do a lot like of like a NASCAR package you know, that the Giants used to pull with just tons yeah. of fast you know before Cam came along, Peppers was that. That freakish athletic individual that he's just an anomaly and, and now he's back on our He team. still is. And, what is and he? Pepper still kind of dwarfs Cam a little bit anyway. Yeah. Which, he's okay, a big boy, man. Yeah. Cam is person is a monster. Guy. Peppers is even that much more of a freak. So. Right. Even at his age, he's still he's, he's a freaking so, monster. I'm he's excited that he came home to finish his career. Like we as we've we, talked, uh, we've right. talked tons of shit. I would have loved to have him three years Jay ago. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got two or three years left. That's what I'm. I, mean, I know he's on the one year deal, but, but he's, 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 he's a monster. He's, he's not he, coming he's, either. His workout regiments on Instagram is freaking sick. Squat routine. That was outstanding. Outstanding. So I mean, about KK. 
you got to pay them, right? You know, I mean, you have to. everybody's going to say that that seems like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. Good for oh, him. Yeah, he's, he's the new big money, but that's what you know. DTs get paid. It's quality D DTs, top three at least DTs. And if you think about it like this. The year before, they were trying to get the deal done, and he's asking for what Fletcher Fletcher Cox level money, seventeen mm -hmm. plus mil, right? He has a so we say a so so year, even though statistically it, he's still up there at the top, and, right? Yeah. And uh, you know we pay him a mil less, plus the cap adjusts and, and raise a little bit, you know, which you have to factor that in too. So it, it's not a bad deal, man. No, and, no, no. and KK's part of the core. Gettleman said he's always part of the core, and you know and. You know, a lot of people are arguing that they want to let him play out the franchise tag, see what Butler does, and, and then see what happens after that. But man, yeah, well, so what do you, what's the future of Butler at this point? I like the kid. I mean, I don't think we have enough information to really go on. Yeah, the guy was hurt a lot, but the guy blocked yeah, two field goals. Well, and he registered the first second season in Denver. That was his. He sacked that. That's yeah, right. So I yeah, don't, we can't it. say anything about him, man. He's a big guy. I got a picture with him from the draft last oh, year. Oh, good, he's nice. A, he's, he's got a lot of hustle for him. He's a monster. He's good. And depth. Absolutely. When it comes to KK. Like I said, he's the fifth highest paid defensive tackle in the league. Uh, name the defensive tackles objectively that you would take over KK. Some people would say so. Sue, Donald, maybe Sue. I don't think so. Yeah. But I wouldn't take any of them because they're all pieces like, of shit yeah. people. <laughs> you wouldn't like, take Cox. Seriously? <laughs> so <laughs> it, he's, I think I he's being paid Cox. what he's worth. Right. Uh, what it you does... Would. Your name make me big. ask is <laughs> what we're going to pay Star and if what? we're going to pay Star. Yeah. Because well, Star, he's the reason that KK's free a lot, but at the same time, too late, eh? I don't think we're going to want to go and pay him KK money. He's going to be, I think he's somewhere in the 8 to 10 million. So look for range. a nose tackle in the draft. That's huh? the Butler experiment it, there. Will he replace Star? Not KK. I mean, KK's here. I, I, I see him as more of a, a rusher than that space eater that Star plays. Because uh, the thing about Star is he can hold two offensive linemen with two arms. <laughs> like he, he, he's an absolute <coughs> wrecking hog, machine. Hog Not saying Vernon Butler can't do that. Right. It just comes down to money. Just though, don't know yet. for sure. And the question is, are you willing to pay another defensive tackle that kind of money? Especially when you have to answer edge rusher questions, mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, we have other needs on this team. Who do we expect to see uh, shine be a superstar this season? Step up. Who's stepping up next? Mm, good question. I, I'd like to see Bradbury. I, I really want to see Bradbury take that they next both step. Came on strong and, just, and just really give Josh Norman the finger. <laughs> and just, and just say right, right. Yeah. In, in the like, second year, like yeah, we, we figured it out. We'll, and, We'll and write honestly, last season off. I'll tie Warley into that. Just the cornerbacks. Like, yeah. it, the two of them Captain's really started to shine towards the end. The veteran uh, uh, yeah, oh, presence out there. I, we I, lost when Harper left. Would be nice. I know. Is that is, that's great. I actually would prefer that happening over Peppers, but both even better. Sure. Yeah, the defense is really teed up right now to, to have a good season. Yes. I mean, you have to feel like they are. Certainly they have some other, you know, they Draft need safety. younger. They need to get younger on the line for yeah. sure. You know, safety sounds like it would, it would certainly be a target. I mean, even some some cornerback depth. But you know, on paper, I'm gonna do the on paper because we did this yes, last yes. year, right? Coming in, yeah. Coming on paper, we're coming off right. on, <laughs> on paper, that's a that's a, that's a good squad. Stone. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really have to agree. I think that the needs are really offensive on this uh, at this point because. In the middle, you got Luke, TD, Shaq, and then uh, our I'm linebacker. Uh, uh, I would. Say that Mayo could start on half the teams in this yeah, league. Really it, good. It, the, well same, the, end, yeah. the same I said for years about A.J. Klein, and now he's going to get an opportunity, mm -hmm. unfortunately. <laughs> Part of the reason why they you know, didn't mind letting him walk, too, is Mayo, Mayo yeah. had a nice couple games at the end. So. For sure. Yeah. And, and, of course, you got, level of intensity still got Ben that, Jacobs. Uh, you know, like, we got a great Oh, we still got Ben Jacobs and, for him. And, and <laughs> you know, we got and Kurt Coleman. Our safeties are, are going to be great. Uh, Coleman and Adams. Um We've uh, we got the uh, the cornerbacks pretty much answered at this point, but the depth isn't there. So I would like to see a little more cornerback depth. We'll probably draft another one for sure. So yeah. do that. Uh, we have picks. It, it, let, let's be honest. <laughs> it, it, Gettleman is not going to make what eight? Uh, eight we have picks. Eight, eight picks. 
He's not going to make eight picks and not take defensive players. <laughs> no, no, no. He, I don't think he's, he's going to make eight picks. He's not no, going to make eight no. picks. There's no yeah. way. A lot of trade talking. Dude, yeah. This is what I'm talking. He's he's got. This is like you know Hanukkah for him. Like he, it's time to you know spread the love. It's 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 time. To, it's, it's a season of giving. For him. Well, I was going to say it's like Christmas for him, but he's Jewish, so I said it's like Hanukkah. For him. He's got eight picks to play with as a GM. He's this got the first he time I've heard and muttered on this show. Hanukkah. <laughs> but it's a uh, drink. It's it's a drinking game now. Every time we <laughs> mention Hanukkah, there we go. Sorry, I'm really sorry we didn't on, on an off topic that we didn't supply beer for you. Can you believe this? We didn't know this, so we should have had you uh, fill out a form of your likes. I blame him. I didn't. You're the good. Yeah, yeah, it's his man cave. They didn't submit my rider to you guys. Like, no, they did. <laughs> the green M and M's. We always point the guilty finger somewhere. Man. Usually, these, <laughs> usually it's that. It's way. Usually, whoever sits in that chair. I'm good. I'm good. It's but fine, yeah. uh, but talking about the draft and, and I. I I agree. I've heard people say that we could pick as little as five times. Right. Because it surprise it, it, me. Yeah. Would, you pa- would you package both of our second rounders to get back into the last three picks of the first? Last three picks? Last I think three from picks. what I've been hearing, the value on those two is somewhere around like the 23 to 25 range. So, well, would you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, of course, it depends on who's on the board, you know, but if someone like Njoku's down there. That's or, exactly who I was you thinking. Know, I mean, certainly John Ross has been somebody talked about, even though, you know, it sounds like his medicals aren't looking good. But, you know, if one of those receivers drops down to that area, I mean, for me, you know, we can do the BPA argument all day long. I think it's <laughs> going to be interesting, especially with the number eight pick, um, to see if we do actually go BPA or if we're grabbing one of, you know, these running backs. Because for me... I personally believe that that um, that CMC is the target. McCaffrey is the target, and I think he's a target over a lot of these. Like these... Fournette and Cook, you would still no, pick him. Uh, I think he goes before Cook. I'm not Fournette. I think Leonard Fournette is one of their favorites. But yeah. for me, I if think... it gets down to Jonathan Allen still there, um, you know, if Hooker's there, I mean, I think I think Adams they might like. But if if one of those top defensive guys that have been you know for the last three months mocked above the top eight, if they're there. I believe they're going McCaffrey, man. I really do. I I, I would have to oh. agree. You get the kick returner. You get a slot receiver. You get a running back. You get a guy with great vision. Very versatile. And versatility is one of the uh, uh, hallmarks of uh, Gettleman's legacy. The guy's got a great move, yeah. great jab step. I, yeah. I'm convinced. It, more and more I read, I'm convinced that Fournette's not going to be there at 8 anyway. And that's kind of what I'm going off when I say I, mean, I think if Fournette's there, then you know, Gettleman is he's, he's a generational talent. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what they believe for sure. But um, going off that assumption that you know either the, the Jags or the uh, the Jets are probably going to grab him, right? Yeah. And then uh, then I still I think they're going offense. I think it's I think it's CMC. Unless something miraculous happens, like Miles Garrett is there for the Jags, uh, I think the Jags are going to take Leonard Fournette. All right. Uh, I and I I firmly believe that Miles Garrett's going number one. We'll see if he would fit in around Charlotte. You know, it's the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think knew you were going there. He could be a spokesperson that's kind of built in, right? Uh, uh, my son was born at CMC Maine. <laughs> this is great. But uh, the ladies would go crazy because you already have Cam and Luke yeah. and Greg, and now you add McCaffrey to it. I mean, our, our, we've already talked about so many this team, the right? We great. have the the <laughs> Panthers <laughs> has the most sexual team. Uh, most they're, sexual. They're yes. good looking dudes. <laughs> they, are, they are. They are. They're all the ladies models. love the Panthers. No problem saying that. We're <laughs> ugly as fucking donkey ass, but you know these guys are on our team. They bring in the girls, and we can look at the girls. Yeah, not but a problem with that. If we did. Go defense at eight. I would like to see us move back into the first and maybe take uh, like an Alvin Kamara uh, or a, 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 one of the uh, the second tier running backs because we've seen Is that Kamara projected in the first. Uh, he's, he's a pretty studly back too. Uh, yeah, Tennessee uh, kid, right? I, yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that he was a late first, maybe early second. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that we could just stay and stand pat and still get value. Yeah. But. You can always get value at the running back position. Are you guys in the draft doing anything for the draft? Yeah, we uh, right. our bar that we, in Charlotte is at is Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. Right, um, and we've been upstairs. They actually have another group that I'm not going to name downstairs in their basement. But there's a, an atrium that they have down there, and they've redone it. They've you know they put uh, wood down the floor, a bunch of TVs up, and that's oh. just going to be our dedicated space just for us and our friends and whoever wants to come by. So mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna be out there hanging out, and everybody's welcome and. You know, we're going to talk a lot of junk and see who we pick. So for me, 
I've been reading these mocks, you know, back and forth for so long. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it to be over. But also, this is this is the most excited I've been for the draft in a long time. Maybe because we haven't picked in the top ten in a while. But and we have um, a lot of picks that we have already traded away. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's and there's a lot of depth on the positions that we're we're really targeting: running back and safety, and you know, so. Um, it's going to be exciting. It's an important draft. It's going to be Christmas and Hanukkah for everyone. I think the last time we picked in the top ten, Luke, we took Luke. Right? Yeah. Uh, with what, ninth overall? Nine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, work. so you guys can tell me, who? what are your predictions for eight? All you guys. Go ahead, Los. Well, I was all about four net, but I, I, I want to know who you won. I want right. to know who you think we're grabbing. How about that? Who who I think we're grabbing? Yeah. I, I have no idea, dude. I, I, was like, I thought four net <laughs> because that's about the extent of uh, the names I've been. He won't make it that far out. Yeah. Now you're telling me, yes, yeah, so I've changed or so whatever. I'm going to go with your, your pick because hey. honestly, I have no college knowledge. Yeah. I'm ignorant. I don't watch anything about the draft. Um, in my house, if there's a draft, I shut the window. So uh, you're going CMC <laughs> as well. <laughs> Uh, I'll go, um, yes, oh. because I don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, the, don't let the tie fool you. Yes, I go, yeah, CMC. What about you, Joe Micahs? I would have to go with the same because that's what I feel we're going offense. I don't have college knowledge also, but it makes sense. We have life. Fournette's not going to be there. I just don't like college sports. So just not, the, the talent level's not there. I don't care. You know what? I, I want to say Christian McCaffrey, but so just for the sake of picking some Zay Browns, we're going OJ Howard. Well, right. Tight end, like, baby. With all these, with all these Another rumors, tight end, really? Yeah. With all these rumors that teams like Philly or even New Orleans could you know jump ahead, if assuming the Jags do take Fournette, right? Yeah. Do the Jets make a trade with one of those teams that want to move up ahead of us and grab McCaffrey? I mean, that's that's the thing. You never certainly have. a rumor, right. and if that happens, then you know I think I think Howard would still be the pick after if that. They if both jump running up. backs are gone, I think Howard's the pick because I think they're going offense, man. Cam needs help. They know it. The defense is prime. You don't believe in this Dixon? Year. Like <laughs> 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 a couple good catches <laughs> last year. No love for Big Dick. He's one of my least hey, favorites. <laughs> what, hey, where did the Saints pick? Uh, the Saints are. 14, I want to say. I think, no, the Eagles are 14. Saints maybe 11. Though. Yeah, yeah. I think they're like yeah, three or four picks behind us. Yeah. Say they really wanted McCaffrey. Right. Would you be willing to package some picks? No. If, if and drop back and get Dalvin Cook. To move back, you're saying? For yeah, the Saints it, it, I, I think that uh, if you move back three or four spots, you could probably still get Dalvin Cook. Sorry, no, yes, I would be open to moving back in any of those situations. I'm not I'm not interested in moving up to get Fournette or Kevin. I, I, I don't believe in moving guys. up. Right. Yeah. It, and and from what I've seen, it, it, Gettleman seems a little hesitant to move up. Well, historically, he's always moved up, but... To what we're talking about specifically, going from eight to six or four. Right. I don't like that move. I like what you mentioned earlier, taking the two twos, packaging yep. them for back into the first, because you're getting a top talent, you're getting that fifth year option. You know, you're getting a guy that's. I don't know if he's going to be a starter, but he's certainly going to be a heavy key contributor. Right. So I like that kind of move. Yep. Um, I just don't like giving up any of those seconds or a second and a third to pop up four extra spaces to draft. Makes no sense, right? Not in that. Honestly, if we if McCaffrey is gone. I think the best move is to move back. I, I, I don't. I don't feel as strongly about this draft like as I have in the past. I don't. I think what when is this the, draft? Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday is round one. Round and then two and three. And two and three mm -hmm. on Friday. Saturday is four through seven. So with that, you always got to say who. If you're going to move back, who's moving up and why? You know, is somebody does somebody want to grab? O.J. Howard that badly at that point, or did one of those D guys, you know, fall? Jonathan Allen, did he fall? And someone eager for some pass rush. So, you know, it's, it sounds nice, and certainly I'd love to do that if that's the option and both those running backs are off the table because, you know, I've said it a few times, like, Cam needs some help, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if we could get out of the first round with having traded the uh, – we keep talking about a hypothetical trade uh, back into the first round. If we could get – McCaffrey at eight, and maybe Njoku at like 25, 26. I, I'm going to call that a win of yeah, the draft absolutely. off of that alone. I, I would be, I would be so happy. Well, just like you don't have any idea of what's going to happen. What's your prediction for the season? Saying if we have a good draft, free agency looks nice. Oh man, oh, is it, it's a way too early. early. You just got to give me a right now. <laughs> All right, that's my prediction. <laughs> no, it's gonna be sixteen. It. Uh, Nineteen to zero. We're definitely hitting double digits and wins. I'm going there so far. 
At least. At right. least 10, for God's sake. Uh, uh, 11 and 5. At least 10. Are we winning the South? Yes. <laughs> Confidence is over there. Is that a question mark? Is that a serious you gotta pray, I Falcons, Ron Burgundy? The Falcons didn't lose anything, you know? So they're going to be. No. Do they get the slump like and we they did? They gained uh, Poe, too. From you know, they're going to gonna, they're, they're gonna be they tough. They have to slump. They're they not going to slump. slump they, I hope so. I hate uh, to 25 death. point lead. No, we. We saw firsthand that has, what Super Bowl hangovers like. It's right. real. Yeah. I mean, the pressure, the expectations, as soon as a few things don't go you know, your way, like it could snowball. We saw it. We saw it happen to us. So for we them saw to it. choke like that, <laughs> we, we, I hope so. we uh, come out from it. I mean, created a product to commemorate the single biggest, greatest meltdown yeah? in the history. Yes. We, had, we have, have one for you. Yeah. Right. We, we wanted to present you gift, with your too. own. The Falcons blew a 25-point lead bumper sticker. I like it. Congratulations. Yeah, Window man. decal. You can hey, frame it. That's beautiful. Put it on your car, your boat, your baby. What a great moment. Yeah, it'll never it, be forgot. Never, we, forget. It'll never forget. Never We've forget. We've said a number of times, like, if right here is the Panthers winning the Super Bowl, the Falcons blowing a 25-point lead to lose the Super Bowl has to be, it's got to be like 1A and 1B. Couldn't have been any better like, to watch. It, yeah, it's, it is my favorite Super Bowl. <laughs> Not only did, you know, we get the result, and if you were a Panthers fan, you should have wanted New England to win. Even that's painful to say. My wife's a Pats fan. That is the greatest Super Bowl. I can watch this 20 years from now with her <laughs> to see the, yeah, her team watch it over. come back and that team go down in flames. But for not only for them to lose, but to lose in that final. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's worthy of a bumper sticker. Because they were so sure. The fans were so sure. Oh, yeah. It was over. Third quarter, the they were like, we're going, we're gone, we're the gone, Falcons Low Bow Wow. The Falcons yeah. tweeted out, like, False. 12 more minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Low Bow Wow is uh, posting a vine or whatever the hell the kids are doing. These days. I don't it's think he's Low Bow Wow no more. I think he's just Bow Wow. Yeah, he's always Bow Wow to me. <laughs> I'll always just remember wow. like Mike. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, my favorite Super Bowl to watch. My team's not in it, but I'll watch that thing all day, every day. Yeah, it's it, Agreed. it's so good. It's like watching Cam at Monday Night Football uh, running away from the Pats. <laughs> it's like ten tackles. Oh, I, I, seventy I, I yards. Watch that on seventy loop. yards. That's the best play. That, that's yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Especially if you watch the YouTube football. one with the kid watching on TV. The reaction. Yeah, that's fun. I hate Cam Newton. I hate Cam Newton. 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 <laughs> I hope we can somehow squirrel the win out of there, man. That's a tough place to play. Ooh, yeah. So uh, you going up there? Uh, how 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 many games do you get away to? Uh, a year? I go to all of them, actually. Oh, yeah. you go to every game? Uh, I'm at all of them. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fucking so cool. Uh, it, look, I would well, never no, I complain know, about right. going, but yeah, it certainly gets exhausting. It, it takes its toll. Even yeah. we we do our traveling too. He's definitely way more road warrior. What I've had season? two seasons where yeah, I went talk all about 16. Your shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. Speak I caught every 16 of Cam's rookie year. I went to all oh, 16 that year. Phenomenal. And yeah. I started doing away games See, probably you know, back in 04, 05. I've seen the Panthers yeah. in all but seven stadiums so far. That's like amazing. I went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm a diehard traveler with this team. Well, I've got get some away, uh, away game footage with uh, with you and with the guys from the Roaring Riot yeah, podcast. Sure. Yeah. We, yeah. We've yeah, actually do. done a crossover podcast with those guys, I heard, too. Yeah, I heard it. So, oh, nice. oh, there's a Roaring Riot podcast. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, our DC guys, actually, the guys I told the story about, they uh, yeah. they spearhead that, and that's, you know, it's our official I podcast. What it's a high world up there. That's high, awesome. Hey, really high quality stuff. Hey, really entertaining. Like, Beautiful. You know, YouTube show. We're three idiots <laughs> who really love the Panthers <laughs> that decided to make a show one day, and really, we're kind of lying when we say we're a podcast because we do more of a YouTube show. We're right. really happy. But, it, but the guys over at the Roaring Riot podcast and the Reddit R Panthers podcast, yep. they, they are top-notch, really, really good stuff. So be sure to check those out as well. I'm going to watch them. Got anything you want to plug? Uh, you got uh, the trip to Jacksonville. I know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you got any seats left for that. We do. Uh, I'll tell you what, the this, this, this schedule is not working in our favor this year. I mean, well, last year, right, we had all the West Coast games, which right. was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, this year, our four biggest trips, which are going to be uh, New England, obviously, mm. Chicago, Detroit, and Tampa, they're all in October. Yeah, so October, four, we're month four out yeah. of five weeks in October, we're traveling. So, um, you know, that, wow. that's certainly going to be be a challenge. But yeah, Jacksonville, 
we're excited about that. It's a Thursday night, which is going to hurt our crowd a little bit, but uh, we've still got over 100 people registered for that. So to get back up there into the pools on, on yeah, a Thursday it, it'll night, it'll still be nice and hot. That's the all, first yeah, preseason sure. game. So it's uh, yeah, first, second preseason, third preseason game. Oh, I thought it was the first preseason. No, it's the game. third actually. It's the oh, second. Okay, yeah, right before the where, what are people, where do they yeah, go okay. find you to find out more information or contact you personally? So just night. you can check us out at RoyingRide.com. You know, we we will have trips to every single away game in some capacity, and even if you're going on your own and, and doing your own thing, we always have like a yes. big night before party, and oh, everybody's yeah. welcome to that. So. You know, if you want us to, to put it all together for you, and, and you know, we can certainly do that. If you just want to show up and be around hundreds of Panther fans, we love that too, man. So it's just about getting everybody together. And um, when you're going into the the enemy's den, no matter who we're playing, it's nice to see a bunch of black and blue around and and, no doubt. Around yeah. around and hear some sweet Caroline in every single bar you go into on the jukebox. You know, That's <laughs> so nice. It's kind of, it's kind of what we do to leave our mark. Nice. <laughs> right, man. It's all nice. right. Well, we appreciate you coming out. And yeah, before we go, I, I brought some uh, some goodies for you guys. What? Oh, what? You get stuff. See, now I'm glad I won't oh, tie man. <laughs> You're the man, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Appreciate so, that. Sunglasses kick Show them off. There you go. Yeah. Be sure to check out the Roaring Riot on Facebook. Check them out on Twitter, RoaringRiot.com. We love merch. swag. Yeah. Let's, uh, swag. we got to do this again maybe uh, mid-season or something. Anytime yeah. you want, yeah. man. Yeah. Anytime Anytime you want. <laughs> To do something out there, they'll work with you guys. That'd be during, awesome. During our, you we know. do a lot of uh, YouTube and Facebook live shit when we're yeah. out and about just being dumb. Yeah, I've so seen we, you guys sh we do should that do that. Watch a lot of those from Denver. Uh, yeah, so maybe before one of the games or something, we can work something out, and uh, it'll be awesome and entertaining for all you guys to watch. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're all about how different all our I got Oh, damn. Oh, like with like bottle openers, oh, too. Oh, oh, that's that's a bottle opener. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to put them on the fly as hell. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment. Buy Falcon stickers. Uh, uh, buy Falcon oh, yeah. stickers. We're Etsy, gonna, eBay. Yeah, we'll have Ooh. the Etsy link in the bottom. Uh, we have new uh, New Orleans Saints colors now for our, our Saints fans. That and our friends with us. That, well, Saints fans yeah. that hate the Falcons. Yeah. Yeah. Bond we can right bond over Orleans. the fact that we hate the Falcons. Yeah, yeah when we the enemy of an enemy is an enemy. And we'll also link uh, Roaring Riot, all their Twitter, their Facebook, and their Bob website. Master Down Splinter, in the master of social media. So, with that, keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. 16-0. <laughs> I like it. <laughs>